Hello, this is Tea Time and welcome back. Our guest on this episode is an Afro-pop rapper and poet born in Freetown, Sierra Leone, raised in Nairobi, Kenya and schooled in the United States. Her first single and official video, Koli, was released September 2019. Let's make welcome the lady who is known for her lyrical freestyle on hip-hop instrumentals and punchline, Tasha. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, guys. So you have so many roots. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 does it do to you basically? Um, thank you guys for having me. I'm very mm -hmm. excited about that. Um, my name's Tasha. I started off as a poet mm -hmm. because you don't just rap as a phase. You don't get up and start rapping, which mm -hmm. plenty of people do now. Um, you have to love the lyrical content of it. So. Um, I, I was born in Sierra Leone, but I didn't grow up there. I grew up in Nairobi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I got to Kenya, um, you know, just being different, I started writing more. And I grew up in a house with three boys, and I'm the only girl. Mm. So you know boys don't like playing with their sisters too much. Yeah. So I found busy writing. And when I moved to America now, America was different. I, I realized that I was even black. I never knew that I was black because being in yeah. Africa, you don't know you're black. You just mm -hmm. know you're a human being. Mm -hmm. You never class yourself as a black person. So America made everything so visible. You're black. You're too black. You're tall. You're, your features are a little bit too big. They're, so it was just too confusing at the age of 12. And um, I started realizing my eyes were bigger, my ears were big, because the kids would constantly tell you things that I did not know in Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I, I started writing. and. That's that's what happened with that. Hmm. All right. So, how would you say your upbringing has affected your lyrical content, especially in terms of music and poetry? How do you infuse your upbringing, different cultures, and all of that into your music and your writing? My brother is the my older brother is the influence for my music. Hmm. Um, how? I, how, how I, so? I remember in '96, Lost Boys had a concert. Hmm. Those were rappers back in the day. They had a concert in Africa, just like how everybody's coming back. Mm -hmm. And um, he would play Chronic. He'll play um, Lost Boys, he'll play um, Trap Called Quest, he'll mm. play Mop Deep, um, he'll play Dr. Dre, he'll mm. play Snoop, he'll play 3 Six Mafia. So uh, listening to him play all that music started just making me listen to rap. And remember back in the day, there was no internet, so we had to write it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would listen to him play it on the stereo, stop play, I'll write down the words, stop play, I'll write down the words. I was like, maybe 9, 10. And then um, I think he, he actually built the, the rapper. Uh, slowly. Mm. Okay, so when did you officially start doing music and how has it been since then? Okay, so I didn't, I'll say this year is my first year officially doing music. Okay. Um, I was a former Miss Sierra Leone. Oh. So I went to Miss World for Sierra Leone. Yeah. So this is where poetry played a part because whenever I got on stage as a beauty queen, you could not rap as a talent because rapping did not look so feminine. Yeah. Rapping is more for, you know, girls that are like, you know... Tomboys. Like, oh, yeah, she's a tomboy. She's mm -hmm. this, she's that, in which I am. But um, it just... It doesn't, it's not, there's no class to it. People put, they don't put class, associate class with females that rap. Mm. So when I was, when I won Miss Sierra Leone, I won Miss Sierra Leone in America and I won Miss Sierra Leone here in Freetown. I went to Miss World. I was also the first black Miss UVA. I went to Miss Africa. I won the best talent there. How did you do all that as a tomboy, really? I mean, I was scared to ask. <laughs> I needed a stage. Okay. Oh. I needed a stage mm -hmm. for poetry. So did you have to consciously groom yourself to consciously groom myself for years to even wow. to even now to the point where I am today because I work for local government. Mm. Okay. So um, in Sierra Leone. So um, conscious consciously since the age of 17 like to now I'm 32 years old. So every time every step I make. So this year, 2019, I was like, uh-uh, you're not going to write poetry to hide that the fact that you can rap. Mm. People have to get used to the fact that you do rap. Mm. So I, um, I was on Instagram, and I contacted Magneto, okay. um, uh, Abuja rapper from mm. Nigeria. And he was like, he didn't think I was serious. He was like, oh, yeah, a lot of women say I rap, I want to rap. I was like, okay, I'm coming next week. And then I called him and I was like, hey, I'm in Lagos. I told you I was going to come. He's like, Tasha, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. So then I started now working on my AP. Okay. And, All right. Yeah. So, All right, so let's talk about Kole. And um, that's a new jam, obviously. A lot yes. of people would say you have watered down your craft from being a, a typical rapper to doing a song like that, which is kind of commercial. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? 
Well, women have to be commercial in rap. Don't you see that a lot of even rappers now have to be commercial? Mm -hmm. Because who wants to listen to rap? It's very rare that people listen to rap. They want to listen to that Afro beat, like, go late, brand new dance of the summer. Oh. So, they, yeah, they want you to give them something to bump to. Mm -hmm. Corle in, in Creole actually means watch. Okay. Oh, okay. It means like Corley. Like you might see a girl and you're like, oh, I call it. Like you know, oh, I like her. Like I'm looking at her. Mm -hmm. So Corley means watch. So um, I was I was on the plane. I was coming here and I was like, the first beat I heard, I was like, the word Corley stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. So the first beat I heard, I was like, let's do Corley, cause I am I am always rapping. And when I'm in when I'm in the studio with like Magneto or Juiz, my producer mm -hmm. that worked with me, they always like they think that. They're like, yo, she raps so much. And I do, because we worked on, I could work on a song a day, as, as long as we have the beat. I believe that you could never complete a song, but when you hear a beat, whatever you hear, just just go. Just flow. Okay. Just as soon as you hear something, you mm -hmm. just go. Okay, so are you currently signed to any record label? No, I'm not. Now I'm let's talk about money. As an independent artist, yeah. you're spending a lot. You're Too managing much. yourself. And Jesus. are you getting support from anywhere or you're just using money from other business? You have other business? Yes. I run so that's what you're doing. You're using money yes, from other business for yes, music. Yeah. So what's your gain? So the smartest part about actually me being in music now, which I'm happy about, I know my surroundings. I know my worth as well. Even even though I'm not as big as I am supposed to be. Well, you're big in Sierra Leone. Yes, I'm big in Sierra Leone because of everything else that I've done. Mm -hmm. So now they're looking at it like, oh my God, she's is she gonna queen. take is she gonna take rap serious? Yeah. So, but I'm not looking at rap for just Sierra Leone. I'm looking at rap for even West Africa. How many female West African rappers that are really actively rapping right now? Uh, There's probably like maybe one or two, but actively. You see, because being a woman, especially at our age, you want to get married, you probably have mm -hmm. children. For singers, it's easier, but I think for rappers, you know, you see them start to die down a little bit. So for right now, I know that there are rappers, female rappers in South Africa, but I'm very competitive like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I want, like, I want that new sound, that new age. Uh, female rappers coming out, and I want to be a part of that. Okay, so you didn't answer my question. Mm -hmm. And right now, okay, you're, that was his. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so right now you're doing music for okay. passion, and because you're not getting anything for now. Yes. Not so, are you saying you're not getting any financial gains? Yeah, from from even when you perform music. in Sierra Leone? Because I know you shows. do a lot of stuff with that free sale and all that. Yeah, we get shows. We'll get shows from like. Um, maybe you get a show here and there, but it's not to put in the money that you put into music. Mm -hmm. I think whenever you have a craft, the money is going to come, but you have to put in the money to lay the foundation for it. Mm -hmm. So this is my year coming out, and it's like in Creole we'll say Osusu. I don't know if you guys have that word here too. Not like Osusu is Os Os like the money you're putting in mm -hmm. because you want it to generate. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. So it's money I'm putting. Like an in. investment. It's like an investment. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting my yeah. money in, but I know that I turn down shows. Too. Okay. Okay. Why? Very quickly, our time yeah. is almost gone. Mm -hmm. But from the little you said, you are a very on idle person. Like you do a lot. You also say you still work in the local government. Yes. So you are very busy. Extremely. So how would you advise young women, or even generally up and coming artists, who would say, "Oh, I'm pursuing my dream," and they are in the studio day and night, not doing anything else? What would you say to them? Being in the studio mm -hmm. day and night is the plan for where I want to be. Mm -hmm. It's not because. I'm just bored and I'm just sitting in the studio. Oh. There is a plan. If you if you put in the work in anything that you do, in a young business, in, yeah. in school, if you put in the work, you're definitely going to see the results. Yeah. How do you see the results? Maybe my results is not going to be as fast as, you know, somebody else that's coming up that got that fame fast. Mm -hmm. But if you actually put in the work, you're definitely going to see the results. And for a female rap, I'm trying to tell you, like, there's nothing like me. And mm -hmm. um, when you know your craft, when you know who you are, when you know your worth, when you know your business, you could be you could step in any arena and steal the show and all right so fine. nobody gets on the show without giving us a free start especially when you're a rapper and, then, and it has to be really yeah. quick 30 it has seconds to be really really <laughs> quick time is and all. talk about your ep coming up in that free start real quick oh my god are you kidding okay so ep before we get ep's coming out in march we're definitely we're gonna drop something and then um so let me if it's freestyle we'll just go up um I got the ghost rider shirt, cause my music is influenced by no nigga. Watch me rap with no beat like a grown nigga. Stomp my chest, beat my feet. I'm no nigga. Never rap for no beat. I'm the hunt gold digger. Get the out my dough nigga. I'm trying to filter it out so we don't do yeah. it. Yeah. So we don't curse on TV. 
and um, racking up these bags, you already know I'm on the winning track. I put on for my city, I got free time on the piggyback. If it ain't about the money, don't hit the line, just the chitty chat. Keep in mind, money gotta be in hand to touch the fur of the kitty cat. If he broke, I don't want nothing to do with him. Birds are the same feather, so I'm classing you with him. Forget the past, forget the last, it's a brand new rhythm. Cash out and I'm out with the highest do bidding. Uh, he know not to write that check if don't got a couple commas. Uh, Love you for who okay. you are. Like more than we are. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. My thank you, as always, you go to my co anchors Ewa Oluo Ritu and Ife Oluo Shuke, the entire production team, and of course, our guest, Tasha. Thank you for being here. Thank you. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and see you later.